What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together, and we're having a pool party. Because it's paranormal pool party time. You're welcome, Orin Pelly. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be doing each of the paranormal activity movies. We're even gonna have some fun guests. Yes, we're gonna have a guest for the next episode. But uh, paranormal activity, you're excited. Yeah, I, I love paranormal activity. I do too. A lot, like watching it again. That's a solid little horror movie yeah we had just watched it pretty recently Mm -hmm. like maybe within the past year i think it might have been within the past year because i had never seen it Mm -hmm. it was one that when it came out i was too scared to see it and i just hadn't watched it since because i as i've said before on the podcast found footage really scares me um is this still the case where it's the most successful most Uh, profitable profitable movie because i'm looking at that budget listed as fifteen thousand dollars holy shit I don't know. Like, I know. I think paranormal activity gets a bad rap sometimes. I think it does too. I think I was thinking about this today that um, found footage stuff like this and Blair Witch, especially, they're easy to parody. So, you know, because again, it's just by you have the original thing that's so low budget. Therefore, it's very easy to recreate and very easy to parody. But I think maybe there's also this idea that a found footage movie. On top of something being a low budget found footage movie is easy to make and didn't require any effort. Yeah. And I think maybe people think that, oh, I could have done that. It's just, oh, what? They just put a camera on a tripod and, you know, slam some doors shut. But it's so, it's so much more than that. It's it, it does so much of so little. I think that that's part of the reason that it gets some unfair flack is I think people mistakenly think that, oh, I could have done that. This and Blair Witch feel so natural because they do retro scripting for both of these, which is is a lot of comedy movies do this too. Kind of uh, like Christopher Guest movies will do this, where your actors just get an outline of what the movie is. They'll be given story beats, character beats, like so. Okay, in this scene, you and this character need to decide that blank, and okay, just get to that point and go. They're basically just kind of making stuff up. And that's why, yeah, I think that's why this movie works is they feel really believable as a couple. And I think he, Oren Pelly did a good job casting these two people who I were strangers. And I buy that they have chemistry and I buy that they're in a relationship. Uh, it had its first premiere in 2007 and then it got, you know, picked up and re-edited and it didn't make its wide theatrical release in the United States until 2009. Yeah. That's so, so much later. That's so yeah. That's th- possibly three years later for these actors. Yeah, I definitely saw this as soon as it came out. Because that, and I didn't realize that they were doing special screenings of this movie in a few towns, including Ann Arbor. I saw that, and because I, it's weird. This movie is so vivid to me, and I was like, why do I remember the marketing for this, and why do I remember this being such a crazy thing? And it's because they were making such a fuss about it on our campus, and it was everywhere yeah and they had this whole viral marketing thing where they only showed it in a couple of college towns and then were like tell people that you want it in your town Mm -hmm. and if enough people did that they would bring it until it eventually got the wide distribution it's crazy that he made this movie for next to no money and at one point steven spielberg watches it and says it's great (laughs) yeah that's like what the fuck i can't even imagine that (laughs) i mean roger ebert gave it three and a half out of four Mm -hmm. what the fuck i couldn't even fathom that i think yeah fifteen thousand is maybe around the budget that like our student films were mine was ten thousand yours was ten thousand yeah and that was oh that was only a 20 minute long movie yeah so right thinking about this is a this full is four times minutes. as long. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Holy shit, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this movie follows Katie and Mika. We've said their names already. Yeah. They are living they are in a big ass that dot com boom. I feel like that's the vibe I get. <laughs> but from that was so much. Mika. That was like 
that was like 90 the bubble burst in what 2000 yeah this but is 2006 that's true i don't yeah. know maybe well they say mika's a day trader yeah that's what i'm saying i think that's the perfect job to give your character if you want them to have an unreasonable amount of money and not have people question it and they're always home because he can I guess. Trades. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it does. But if you're telling trade. me that they can afford this house, sure, I believe it. Yeah. Sure. He's got his little doodads <laughs> See, that's, and that's laptops. Why I also think he's leftover.com boom money because they're in San Diego. I don't know. Just like West Coast. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He also has a shirt that says coin net on it. We got a lot <laughs> of close ups of coin net. <laughs> did you, did you it, look up what that was? No. That's a hard I didn't. thing to Google. Coin net. Yeah, you're going to find all kinds of shady websites right. trying to be Bitcoin. Just <laughs> weird current cryptocurrencies. Weird thing, too, is that the actors go by their real names in this, which mm-hmm. is kind of fun. Mika Sloan and Katie Feathers. They don't say their last names. Yeah. I don't think so in the movie, but those are their real first names. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, just lends to that Blair Witch style of like, these aren't actors, they're real people. I mean, the movie begins with a card that thanks the families of these people and the San Diego Police Department as though it were acquired, like, crime scene footage. Yeah. So it's it, no title card, no opening credits, nothing like that. It's like Blair Witch in that regard. It's presented as being real. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, like I said, when found footage movies do that well, I love it. I love it, too. It just yeah. sucks that it became oversaturated by, like, 2015. But this house is the most mid 2000s home oh my god i've seen in a movie in a bit yeah it made me feel like i just had such intense feelings of being back in high school yeah i my family had nothing near this house but i would go over my friends houses yeah and there were some that had these houses we got brown wall everything's painted brown (laughs) we were all obsessed with painting everything coffee colored in the 2000s it's got an almost open concept but not quite no. because there's like a half wall oh no no open concept is like right now we're all super into open concept yeah thank you property brothers yeah and that but just means no walls between your like living room living everything's room, open which is but nice their and spacious. house has the stupid, stupid we kept half getting wall. angry about it every time we saw it. it's this wall between the kitchen and the den or whatever the fuck that room with the fireplace is where it's it's a wall, but there's also a cutout in it. Yeah, it's so even like you a can corner. what be on your computer and look at the fireplace. It's where his fucking kitchen. computer <laughs> is with with two monitors, by the way. Which like in 2006, props, dude. Yeah, I didn't have two monitors. He probably was a gamer. I would say Counter Strike. Counter Strike for sure. Counter Strike. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know he played uh, online poker too. Yeah, we were. Oh my gosh, I we were looking up because uh, I said he. That guy has to be an online poker player. For he just sure. looks like one. And then we were looking up when that was illegal. And what it was that exact year? It was. I think it was 2006 he was that probably it was made illegal. Devastated. He was probably pissed. That's probably why he decided to buy this camera and start investigating I think, his I think, girlfriends. Oh my god! Shit, because yeah. he used to spend all his time playing poker. That's. They banned it, and he was like, "I have to do something with all this free time. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make a." documentary about my girlfriend's haunting we've got some like world market art what is that up on the walls it's a it's a chain of stores like home decoration stores it okay. just reminds me of the 2000s they have that uh big projection tv yes you know? the giant box tv yeah those things sucked it comes out that he bought this camera to record themselves at night while they're sleeping because apparently katie his girlfriend has been experiencing some paranormal Activity. activity oh i'm surprised they don't say the title on it they near very nearly they do. almost do yeah. yeah but she says that it's been following her since she was eight years old yeah the same type and of activity this is for her she already she it's something she takes seriously that it freaks her out and mika doesn't we can tell he doesn't really believe it and he thinks it's just a, a weird thing yeah he just wants to fuck around with this camera yeah and he's like well if there's anything it'll be cool if we catch it on tape which to be fair it would be be sure pretty cool but yeah so he he sets up the camera on a tripod in their bedroom overlooking their bed you can see the the upstairs hallway in the background you know the shot it's been parodied it's on the movie cover i think you know the fucking shot Mm -hmm. and what's great and i feel like i've said this before on the podcast is that this conditions you to be afraid of this shot because little things will happen each time that 
uh, they go to sleep with that camera set up. We get a card saying what night it is. And so the first night, and a little time code too, so you know what time of night it is. So the first night, night number one, it's 2.09 a.m. And there are ju- you just hear some little noises, a little bit of thumping and some keys. Because the next morning they wake up and Katie's keys are in the middle of the floor, mm-hmm. not where she left them. But what's great is that... You go back to the movie and their interactions during the day and they talk and they find out new things. And then it'll cut back to that shot of them getting ready to go to sleep. And I remember seeing it in theaters and it would cut back to that shot and the audience would start screaming. Man, I wish I saw this in a theater. Oh, yeah. It seems like it was a lot of fun. It's a fun communal experience. Uh, If they have that new one coming out, we can definitely see that in theaters. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that shot is so, even just watching it, like we have lights on. It was, we started it in like the early evening too, I think. Still, that shot is so. Ooh, it's great. Yeah, it's great. It's it's a fun, fun movie. Yeah, so after that uh, first night, they have a psychic come over that, of course, Mika is just rolling his eyes about. Oh, yeah. Oh, right around here too, they do have a paranormal pool party. They're oh, they swimming yeah, in the backyard and we both yell paranormal. <laughs> of course, yeah, because of course that nice ass house has a they nice a ass pool. fucking pool in the oh, back. Oh yeah, along all that with poker whole- money and-, <laughs> and the dot com money is CoinNet, CoinNet and uh, World Series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, though, if he was a poker player, do you think he'd have any bracelets, or do you think he's just playing oh, online? Oh no, yeah, he's just playing online. Okay, yeah, I'm sure he maybe he qualified life, life goals to get a bracelet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah, we got a psychic coming over. Yeah. Mika's being a dick about it. We, this whole movie, we were talking about how in this exact scenario, you would be such a dick to the psychic. I wouldn't be a dick to the psychic's face. Okay. Fair. Yeah. I'm respectful. Okay. I, like I said to you, I'm much less a Mika and much more a Hugh Crane from, from Hill, uh, House. Hill House. Yeah. Because in that show, they have haunting going on and the dad is just like, I'm sure there's a rational explanation. And that would be me for sure. Right. I don't believe in no, the supernatural. No, Mika is, is a special kind of idiot. Like, he's such a jerk this whole movie. But yeah, I I think if a demon were to come for me, I would be really screwed you're a perfect target i i am because I you wouldn't, wouldn't believe me i wouldn't me. believe you if you had evidence i'm empirical but minded that's if the you had thing empirical is, I think evidence even if i gave you evidence i could be i'm good i'm good at editing videos i could good. be yeah. making it you know but i don't believe you would lie to me so if you showed me a video and you said i didn't edit this okay and it was of you know the door swinging back and forth no that one i'd probably Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm so fucked. The footprints because they even say, would get me. The footprint, that's a cool part of this movie. <laughs> but they even say in this, this is later when they talk about finding a, a case that's pretty much identical to Katie's, and they say, oh, but they had an exorcist come in like right as she started experiencing quote-unquote symptoms, and they still couldn't save her, and Katie gets so much farther yeah. along. I Like, I'd be so fucked. You'd be screwed, honey. I'm sorry. But it's a good <laughs> thing that demons aren't real. But she tells the psychic that, yeah, she, this is where we get our backstory. She's yeah. had this since she was eight. Her younger sister, Christy, could also see this thing that was just like this shadow form standing at the foot of I'm her gonna bed. I'm going to guess Christy comes back. Yes. The way, okay, <laughs> just the way you said that and then realizing, oh, we got some prequels. Okay. Yeah, interesting. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they, uh, she talks about her and her younger sister would see this, but it would only, like, torment her. And then their house burned down, and they never found a cause. So, you know, probably had to do with that little demon thing. And, yeah, because it followed her from that first house to the rest of the places she lived growing up, the psychic says, well, it's not a ghost because that would be kind of restricted to one place. This is probably a demon, and that's not my bag, and, well, baby. It's my time to leave. <laughs> when he comes back later. So funny. It's so that is, fucking funny. It is it is a very funny scene, and it's not supposed to be. And it's not that I think it's a dumb scene. I think it's a great <laughs> scene, but that guy is so funny. Because, yeah, it's like way later <laughs> in the movie. He walks in the front door and is just like, oh, I can't be oh, here. Oh, I have to I, go. I have to get this. No. <laughs> like, oh, this is too fucked up now, and I'm leaving. Sorry, you're fucked. You're fucked. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fucking great. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> but the guy is also like, you're probably going to be antagonizing it with this camera or like calling yeah. it out. And I do like, though, that this psychic is also he comes in and is like, look, most of the time 
we're going to figure out a reason that this is happening. Like it's pipes or it's seems like a rat or something mm-hmm. making noise. So you know that when he says, oh, actually it's a demon, he means business. Yeah. Yeah. And it was around here also I wrote down, I know it's just a little filmmaking technique. There's a lot of tiny little dissolves. Like mm-hmm. two frame dissolves. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm assuming that that's just them taking air out of the footage of an unbroken camera shot. And uh, I, I don't think it interrupts the flow or is n- probably noticeable to non-editors. Mm-hmm. They probably don't even notice. So just props to them for um, not being chained to that uh, format of a found footage thing w- where it might slow down the pace and really drag. It also kind of for me, adds a little bit to the universe of this being a found footage because to me, the little dissolves. I'm just imagining the whoever at the police station or whoever had to edit this thing is someone involved with the case and is not necessarily a filmmaker. So I'm just imagining some cop like in iMovie or whatever, (laughs) adding the little titles and then, okay, ooh, I'll put a dissolve here. It just feels very... You know, it's not polished, and I think that that adds to it for me. Like you almost see the 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 hand of the invisible character that's editing the movie, which I kind of like. Yeah, because there are also some like fade fade downs to black. Uh, yeah, they're just little touches, and like I said, um, even if it might, not, I think you just put forth a good reason for it existing in universe kayfabe, if you will. Yeah, but uh, I think that it's. It's nice that it doesn't like restrict itself to like it has to be unbroken camera because that could result. No, I'm imagining in a slow the private movie. investigator putting this together or something and then putting it out for release. I yeah. think it's great. Yeah, it's fun. So night number three, we'll just skip night two, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, this introduces the tactic of I think where it shows like a time code and then it like rushes through the time code in like fast motion. So you can see the footage sped up so you can see what's happening uh, through the night. But really it's just uh, more rumbling. The door kind of moves and the next morning Mika looks at the footage and does see that the door moves. Yeah. It's spooky. Yeah. I guess spooky. Also they wake up at six fourteen to an alarm. Why do you set his alarm at six fourteen? I'm, I'm just saying 614 like oh that's six or 630 yeah 614 what the fuck that guy's a weirdo <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've i ran the calculations it's the most efficient time for me yeah to wake in up my is... my cycles if i wake up at 614 <laughs> oh man that guy's doing that before there's apps for it and everything he's yeah. doing that math and <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and uh, he's already fucking taunting the ghost yeah he's me- like oh is this all you got with the door yeah and the psychic has already said one he he also referred them to a demonologist oh yeah that's right two he's saying he, this demon is gonna feed off of conflict and negative energy don't use a ouija board because mika <laughs> says well let's just use a ouija board and tell it to go fuck itself and this guy says no you can't do that you can't taunt it you can't use a ouija board because you're basically inviting it in by letting it communicate with you. So what does Mika do? He's walking around because he's the man of the house and he's the alpha and he, oh, someone in my house uh, attacking my woman. He does say this later. He really does, yeah. (laughs) And so he's going around and antagonizing the demon. Your demon's worthless. You're worthless. You're nothing. Well, it's because, yeah, he just refuses to listen to her as she's like saying, hey, I've dealt with this my whole life. Please stop antagonizing it. And his argument is, well, you should have told me about this before, which like, I guess. I guess. But then she makes the very good point of when do I tell you that? (laughs) When, you know, I think think the moving in together is the point at which you mention it. But that doesn't give him the right to antagonize the situation. Yeah, he's being an asshole about it. Yeah. Yeah. This guy, it's funny. He's filming all of his guitars at one point. And we were just like, this guy loves Goo Goo Dolls. Goo Goo Dolls? I think Goo Goo Dolls. I think he I think he learned, the first song he learned how to play on guitar was Iris, for sure. Oh, yeah? So he could sing it to Katie. Okay. And I don't want the world to see me. <laughs> like, what, should she tell him that she's haunted by demons after he does that? <laughs> when are you going to bring it up? <laughs> Pearl Jam also, for sure. Definitely Pearl, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Hey, want to talk about our sponsor this week, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. We love HelloFresh over at the 
dead meat apartment. I was going to say offices, but no, it's our, our apartment. It is so crucial that we're able to have delicious, fresh food delivered to us. We work from home, but we're always very, very busy and we are very bad at grocery shopping. We've had times where we've tried to, you know, stock up on vegetables and ingredients for healthy dishes. And then all of those ingredients turn to sludge in the vegetable drawer in the fridge because we didn't use them quickly enough. With HelloFresh, you don't have to worry about scary sludge in the fridge because everything is pre-measured week to week. So you don't have any leftover ingredients. You use everything. It's actually very good waste-wise if that's something you're concerned about. It also makes it really easy to cut down on takeout food, which as tempting as takeout can be, it's not the greatest for you. But luckily, HelloFresh is very quick, really quick meals to prepare. I get to help too, even though I'm very, very bad at cooking. James is the cook of the relationship. Just about 30 minutes, 30 minutes or less. Super, super easy. And there's something for everyone. They have family recipes. So you, if you have pickier eaters, they have that in mind. Calorie smart recipes and vegetarian recipes, which is what we get delivered. And it's great because their vegetarian stuff has a lot of protein in it. So one of my favorite dishes is the sweet potato and black bean tacos. They also have avocado in them. Those, oh, those were so, so good. So if you're feeling stuck food-wise, it can be easy to get stuck having to schedule grocery trips and meals and plans and diets and all that. If you want to try HelloFresh, you can get $80 off your first month by going to HelloFresh.com slash DeadMeat80, that's eight zero, and enter DeadMeat80, all one word. So again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Dead meat, all one word, then eight zero, and enter the promo code dead meat eight zero. Basically, it's like receiving eight meals free. Well, that's a lot of meals for free. HelloFresh.com slash dead meat eighty. That's the other thing about this movie is it, it builds the scares slowly. Yes. Oh, it's nice and it's drawn out. I think this movie gets a bad reputation for being Born. heavy on jump scares or being just. It's, it's weird. You hear both you do, yeah. criticisms. You hear both that it's boring, which I don't agree. And also you hear that it's just jump scares and that's it, which I also disagree with. Yeah, Because I sure. think the jump scares, I don't think there's a ton of them. I mean, they're definitely there and they're good. And that's the main thing is that they're done well. But they serve a point and they're not constant mm -hmm. and there's definitely moments where re-watching this I was remembering scenes watching it the first time where I was so tense and watching it again knowing oh there isn't a jump scare at this part I can chill out a little bit yeah the first time watching it is a unique experience it is, yeah. for sure because you don't know when the scare it was are interesting happen. watching it again realizing there are so many prime moments for jump scares that they don't happen in yeah, and I think that's actually something that Roger Ebert said uh, or alluded to in his review about that it's scary because it makes you scared of nothing. Right. Like, it makes you scared of scares that aren't there. Yeah, exactly. Which is great. And that's the sign of a really effective use of jump scare is the jump scare alone, yes, it's great and, and fun when it's done well, but a good jump scare is going to, it's going to stick with you the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. It's you, It's like building this framework where you're scared when nothing's happening and this does that really really well yeah it's good it's little like little sprinkles of <laughs> yeah it's like putting salt on a honeydew oh sure if you know it brings out the flavor <laughs> is that is the honeydew the jump scare in this no the salt's the jump scare and the honeydew's the movie oh okay i'm gonna cut that <laughs> <laughs> So night five comes and it's more humming and uh, Katie sits up panting and uh, yeah, they hear like a slamming noise, I think, and go downstairs. Mm -hmm. Nothing's there. But the next morning, the bead next time, it's bead it's time. It's bead time the next day. Katie has a friend over and I didn't write her name down, but Mika comes that. over and sticks his fucking camera in their faces. He's like, let's talk about this ghost or demon. Like, I know it's bead time. I know it's bead time. But ladies. I found some sound waves in the audio Dude, recording. When you see, because I, my friend, I feel like Caitlin is my bead time friend. Sure. And if I. Caitlin's ever over and we're in the middle of bead time, which like we've literally had because we embroider <laughs> stuff together. 
I think you would know better than to interrupt bead time. I won't time. interrupt bead time. But I don't know if I found a sound wave of a ghost. <laughs> it's a ghost being like, bleh. <laughs> yeah, they don't know what it says. It's he says it's a different language. And this is when he wants to get that Ouija board again. And he says, I promise I won't buy a Ouija board. You guys, the <laughs> most he's the most sitcom boyfriend. He's such a fucking dick. I promised Katie I won't buy a Ouija board. Wink. Promise me. Make a promise me, please. Fine. I promise you I won't buy a Ouija board. Thank okay? Uh, nothing happens for a while, like, in, in the movie timeline, because the next night we see is night 13. Night so it's 13. like a week goes by. But that night, there is some thudding, some thumping, this and then a... the shriek. Ooh, yeah. The shriek sounds crazy. It's like, ah! Yeah, I think that's got to <laughs> be the biggest scare so far oh for sure and then a big crash and we don't know what the crash is but when they come downstairs the chandelier is kind of swinging mm -hmm. up on the rooftop or the ceiling i guess and uh yeah that leads him to do an evp experi experiment yeah he is still not really taking this seriously even though do you both heard how loud that was i think he writes it off as like oh it was just it was dark and it was just i was like a kid being scared it's but like dude you have it you on have the tape. footage yeah it sounds like a demon in your kitchen <laughs> but instead he has a mic out and uh is recording asking it questions he asks it the monty python questions what is your quest what is your favorite color uh night 15 is the next night we get and this is when Katie stands up out of bed and then walks over to Mika's side of the bed and stands there yeah. staring at him for about two, two hours. hours. May I remind you, this is after the day where Mika tells the demon to speak English while he's doing his microphone test. This America demon, we speak English. <laughs> it didn't know you were haunting Mexico or something. Yeah. You're going to haunt us Americans. You speak, speak in English. Speak English. <laughs> if you speak English, you, you can haunt my girlfriend. It's fine. <laughs> oh, and yeah, Mika's also saying, hey, the camera's making it worse. Please stop. Which, oh, Katie's saying it? Yeah. Yeah. what I say? You said Mika's saying Oh, yeah. Katie's saying, hey, the camera's making it worse. She's saying that the whole fucking movie, and he's not having it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, she stands over him for two hours. Because yeah, I you see it. the time code when she gets up is one thirty six, and then she walks over there, and then it just speeds through until 3.30, and she's still standing over him. I love that creepiness it's there. It's good. I it's love, so good. I love the, the look of the fast-forwarded footage. I wonder how long she actually did stand there for, and I'm wondering how much they messed with what's the perfect combination of fast forward speed plus actual filming time to get that perfect yeah. kind of jerky because motion because I think they do it just right and I'm curious what they yeah. decided on because you, you'd be surprised it's like you don't think about how much would thought would go into that effect but they probably goofed around with it a bunch to get that perfect look because she's definitely not standing there for two hours because we have had things before where we had two hours of footage uh one time years ago we did this thing where we watched all the twilight movies in a yeah, single day remember right. that and we had GoPro footage of us on the couch watching it. And I remember when I started editing that project that would never be, we, I, I would like do the speed through thing. But like when you speed through two hours of footage, there's no way to get it looking like this. Cause it's, oh, it's just too fast. It's way too fast yeah. to fit in this time span I, in the video. I wonder if they, it's probably like 10 minutes max. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they, not tried two hours, but even tried like half an hour. And then we're like, oh, fuck, this is going to be too crazy right? looking. Yeah. I, yeah. Don't know, I would love to to ask him all of these really specific questions about filming. Because all you got to do, yeah, you speed it up and you put the time code and people believe it. Yeah. You know, no one's thinking we're about that. We're such post-production yeah. people that we're thinking about that specific <laughs> problem. But I, I think it's interesting, yeah. So after she stares at him for two hours, she just leaves the room, and he wakes up a little bit later. It's still night, and he's like, where the fuck's my girlfriend? And he goes downstairs outside, and she's sitting out on the back yard little swing, swing little which, swing set well that would be nice to have a little they swing. have the whole they entertaining a, area i know that place san is, diego dude yeah i feel like you can get a lot more house in san diego than you can uh, up here definitely more than up here that's for sure yeah but they got but a nice little house they do it's, bad, it's haunted as fuck yeah. well i guess she is not the ha the house after they're gone then oh that's true cool house. yeah because it's not the house yeah 
Good call. Let's look for it. Yeah. We'll be in San Diego. That'd in a be few a weeks. fun. Ooh, because I we both really at some point we want to own a horror house. <laughs> I don't really care what house, but it'd be cool I to care. just have a well, okay, yeah. <laughs> there's some I don't want like the shack from Evil Dead. <laughs> Although that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. But like Paranormal Activity House would be a cool house to live yeah, as in. As long as we could do something about that stupid half wall. Yeah, no, that, that that's coming. Down. We'll get the property brothers. Property to come brothers knock are coming over, down. man. Uh yeah. So she's sitting outside on her swing and she's like she's basically got a tank top and shorts on and Mika's saying it's freezing out let me get you blankets and she's kind of I thought you're just gonna say let me get you blanket let me get you blanket <laughs> so he goes inside and the tv's on in their room and it's all staticky and stuff which is spooky nice poltergeist static on there yeah and she, when she comes back in the room, she doesn't remember anything. Yeah, it's almost like she comes out of being hypnotized. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen someone get hypnotized at like a party? Or we had a hypnotist at our grad, uh, our high school graduation party, or we had a little party. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was tradition at our school. We would have an overnight party. So uh, like, like they, in the school. Yeah, they lock. Yeah. Like everyone gets locked in, and they have like magicians and face painting, and so we had a hypnotist, and that's what that remind is like someone just like comes out of being hypnotized and so she basically wakes up and she has no idea what the fuck's going on and that just pisses mika off more i know he's such a dick about it blankets for you 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 were were acting so fucking weird yeah he literally i wrote it down why are you such a fucking weirdo why are you crazy like this (laughs) yeah like what the fuck dude mika fuck off oh man but I think the next day is when he borrows that Ouija board. Yeah. And there she's like getting ready for a date. She's all excited to just go out and not have to think about this shit. And he's like, but before we go, mm-hmm. let's talk to some demons. And yeah. she is pissed. Yeah. I love, by the way, this is when we get a better shot of their kitchen. And I noted the wavy jar of peppers. Oh, that yeah. reminds me of the 2000s. For sure. I've Everyone seen those peppers. Everyone had a wavy jar of peppers. Did you, did you eat those peppers? I don't think so. They were just decoration? Yeah. I think they were just there. I at least... Because we never had one of those. But we never friends, had those. It's those weird. were too fancy this, for I us. feel like this house is a representation of what all of our friends' houses were like yeah. in high school. Because this is not what my house looked like. No, not at all. This is like, like what mine. everyone else's house did, mm-hmm. including the wavy jar peppers. Yeah, I wonder if people use those. I don't think you do. I think they just sit there and, f- what, ferment? I don't know. I don't know. But what if you're, like, pickling them? I, dude, I don't know. You know who would know? Gressel. <laughs> He's probably at work. I don't care, call him. He's going to be like, he's going to answer thinking something's wrong. Yeah. He's going to be like, like, why are you? Oh my God, actually, yeah, that might actually freak him out. But But still. But still do it. (laughs) We're calling Grussell to ask him. Hey, what's up? We're Hey, we're recording the podcast. You're like literally live on the podcast right now. I'm... I'm live on the pod. No. <laughs> okay, we have a question. We have a question for you. Yeah. And take this seriously. I need a serious answer. Okay. You know, in like mid two thousands, you're in. You're at a friend's house in their kitchen, maybe even your own kitchen, dude. And there's a jar. There's like a jar with a liquid, maybe. And they're always like wavy for some reason. They're like a wavy jar full of different types of peppers. Do you know what we're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you eat those? No. They're just decoration? I think technically they're edible, but I believe they were sold as decoration. Okay. They would have been sold alongside those posters of, like, an Italian clown with a giant fork rolling spaghetti. Oh, my God. That's so accurate. (laughs) And you get it at World Market, right? Yeah, yeah. Or, or, yeah, some store like that. Like, what was that weird... Like Tuesday morning or whatever, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what Tuesday morning is. Yeah, that's weird. It's, but it's another, it's another bullshit store for moms. <laughs> cool. cool. Thank you. Thanks, bud. <laughs> yep. Bye. Right, bye. <laughs> bye. I'm so glad you picked up. <laughs> yeah, very quickly. Too. I, dude, we should rewatch this movie and see if they do have a picture of like a sh- a chef clown rolling spaghetti. Because <laughs> that's so fucking true. 
<laughs> oh. oh my god. All right, Ouija board. Yeah, so so before they go out for their date, Mika just tanks <laughs> the whole night. He like yeah. ruined it. Because they leave they leave at like 7 30 and they come back at like eleven thirty and she's still pissed. She's still pissed. She off. like opens the door Mika, still why yelling would you at you Say it. you have a Ouija board before you leave for a night out. You know it's gonna suck and make it all so he's, shitty. He's like, we got ten minutes before we have to leave. What if we talk what to if the we demon? Do, what if we talk to the demon? God damn. God, and then Mika, so he has a Ouija board, and that's when she says, you promised you wouldn't buy a Ouija board, and that's when he says, mm. Actually, <laughs> I borrowed it Yeah. from Chris Moneymaker. God, I was half expecting him at some point to be like, for, for her to be like, please stop filming, please. And he's like, okay, I'll stop filming. But then he'll keep doing it and say, no, I'm videoing. It's not film. <laughs> he does. We forgot I'm to taping. mention that in the be- like the first 10 minutes of this movie is him trying to make a sex tape. He want the, the first few minutes. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Not even a few minutes. It's like a bit of this movie is him trying to make an amateur porn. <laughs> yeah. He just really- every time, every night it's like, hey, how about some fun well, stuff we mess on around camera? And, yeah. I was trying to think of how much of this movie you you could get away with uploading to a porn site and how like how much of people would watch thinking that they were going to start fucking because yeah. that's what it feels like, like hot young while. couple try out their new video camera yeah exactly. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes uh, yeah. as soon as they leave with her very angry uh we see because he left the camera on and running the ouija board start to move around i like this and then it fucking bursts into yeah, flames yeah well we see like there's plants blowing oh yeah too there's like a lot nice... of moving around yeah, uh, like curtains that. and plants it's great and we can see that the 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 planchette as it's called the ouija board is moving around and we can see it's spelling something mm-hmm um, and then, yeah, it just kind of lights up. It's a cool effect. I it's think great. It, it looks, yeah. It's like a really nicely timed. I'd be curious uh, to see how they did that. <sighs> Me too. I want to see how they did a lot of stuff in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, they get back and he finds the burnt board. And I think the next day he's like, he like uh, watches the videotape and recreates where the planchette. Yeah. The planchette goes on the board. And he figures out that it was saying something like Adina, Diane, maybe. Mm-hmm. And later he finds that that Diane is the name of the uh, the girl that you mentioned earlier, who he finds on Web 1.0. Mm-hmm. That it's oh yeah, this Angel Fire site. <laughs> yeah, that it was a girl who experienced the same, pretty much exactly what Katie experienced in when she the 1960s. Eight, in the 60s, yes. So I'm uh, guessing that's a prequel. It's not. It's not. They don't go back to because how would you film that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good question. But yeah, uh, so he finds out on the internet about this Diane chick who was also haunted by a demon when she was eight. House burned down, exorcism, she died. Yeah. Not good news. And the exorcism got involved again, like way earlier than where Katie's at now. So that's Mm -hmm. not good. Night 17 is a baby powder plan. And this at this point, Katie's like, dude, can we please just call the fucking demonologist? Yeah, because she's asked so many times. She's and asked I, so I wish that times. she would have just done it. I know. Because she, she keeps asking, hey, can we please call the demonologist? And Mika says, no, we're not going to call a demonologist. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix it. I'm the man. I, it's my house. Blah, blah, blah. For him, it's just, it's like a pride thing. Because it's, it's weird. Because he clearly believes something's weird. And I think he's just such a... Like, he wants to be such a macho dude that he has now, he's accepted that something's going on, but instead of asking for help, he wants to fix it himself. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't deny all this stuff going on, especially not the baby powder night, Mm -hmm. where his plan is to sprinkle baby powder all over the floor to track it. Yeah, because he wants, he's like, oh, if there's something coming in and out of the room, it's going to leave footprints. Mm -hmm. And something does leave footprints. It does. It's real nice. It's real spooky. It's cool. It got baby powder footsteps, and then he follows them back towards a room uh, further back in their hallway that has an opening to the attic and the the door on I the remember ceiling is this, like ajar. This scene really freaked me out the first time we watched it because it's like a, it, it goes up to like their attic and Meek, or Katie says, Mika, you're not going up there. And Mika says, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go up there. But I am just going to take a look though. And then so he takes the camcorder and like sticks it up there and yeah. it's the camcorder light and he's kind of turning it around. You think th- that's again, that was, that's a prime That's like scene. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But that's a scene I, I'm thinking of when there could be a jump scare there and there's not. Mm-hmm. Instead, he sees something that's in the insulation or whatever all that crap up there is. And it's 
he goes and grabs it and it's a picture of Katie from when she was like eight. And she said earlier that when her house burned down, they lost everything. So this picture shouldn't exist. But and it's even half burned. Yeah, it's all burnt. Yeah, it's yeah, the edges are all burnt. So it shouldn't exist and it definitely should not be in their attic. And he, he found it like above their bed. It's above where their bed would be. Yeah. yeah. So cool. That's a nice, yeah, that's a fun, I memorable, like, spooky thing. Yeah. And Katie, I think, and I'm glad this was kind of written into this. She says, dude, it left footprints because it wanted to leave footprints. Yeah. It's, it didn't have to. It's not like this thing is walking up and down around the house. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it decided, okay, I'm going to leave footprints to lead them to this area i'm gonna just fuck with them exactly yeah. but my mika's such an idiot yeah also every time that we say mika i think of the fucking musician who i don't even know if he still makes music oh my god yeah the Speaking freddie mercury the sounding yeah exactly this would be prime mika time is 2006 2007 yeah you know mm-hmm. sucking too long on your lollipop yeah love's gonna get you down Love's gonna get you down yeah, yeah, Mika's fun. Let's see. Yeah, Mika was great. That Grace Kelly song was a fucking. Grace Kelly is a good song. Yeah. yeah. Night 18, mm-hmm. footsteps, uh, lights turning on and off, and then the door slams, and there's like pounding on the door. Again, like we said, they slow roll these scares. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're pretty little things. simple mm-hmm. scares, too. But they're also, you know, the more that you can put yourself in their shoes, the scarier it is. The more you can suspend your disbelief and just buy into it mm-hmm. and just accept that you're not watching a movie, you're watching actual footage that people recorded, that makes it way more enjoyable and scary. Mm -hmm. Because it's like then, yeah, a door moving on its own is scary. Maybe not if you're in the world of fucking, uh, I don't know, The Conjuring. Mm -hmm. That's not as scary because there's other crazy stuff going on. But with this, just buy into it. Mm -hmm. It's fun. The next day, the picture of them is broken, like the grass, the glass is cracked, mm-hmm. and uh, like his face <laughs> is all... scratched. I love he says something like, "Why well, is my face all scratched up and yours isn't?" <laughs> yeah, well, maybe because you're the one fucking with because the demon. You're, because you're an asshole, Mika. And you like out there in their house, challenging him to a fight. Yeah, <laughs> he really is. He's like walking around like a rooster, just like come at me. He's yeah. He literally says, "Is that all you got?" Yeah. God, he sucks. God, Mika sucks. This is when the psychic comes back and walks into the front door because she can't get a hold of the demonologist. She tries calling. Yeah, the He's demonologist like, is. I don't know. Fucking on vacation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the psychic comes back, walks in the front door, and is like, "I have to leave." He goes, "Oh, whoa! This is <laughs> no. This is not good." I sense that this thing is pissed. It's pissed that I'm ha- here. It's pissed at you guys. Mm-hmm. I'm outie. Yeah. And he just fucking leaves. Yeah. It's so great. He doesn't even help him. He just, <laughs> yep, turns out and leaves. Yeah, he's like, I'll see what I can do. We never hear from him again. No, no. I was thinking, what would you, if you're in this situation, what do you do? Because my thought is. You said go somewhere public. Yeah, I said go somewhere crowded. But like, for sleeping. For, okay. <sighs> yeah, okay. So if it's nighttime. Mm-hmm. Go to, I don't know, there's got to be stuff at night where there's, like, people. But you got to sleep. Eventually. Yeah. A hostel? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Nighttime, yeah, nighttime makes it harder. Yeah, Because if it's during the day, it's just, like, go to the mall or something, or, like, a beach where there's people. Yeah. And even if the demon is doing stuff and, like, other people can see it. Yeah. No, it's when you go to sleep, man. Yeah, I don't know where. Yeah. That's when it fucks I don't know with where them. Where would go? So, yeah, maybe a gas station, like an all-night truck stop. Mm. Like one of those big ones where there's always truckers there. Yeah. I don't know where else you'd go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So night number nineteen. Now we're just rolling with the nights. They are sequential at this point. Uh, the blanket moves on them, mm. which is another cool effect. Like the blanket just kind of, and then she gets uh, pulled out of bed. Yeah. Right? I think that might be a different night, actually. Oh, that is, yeah. This first time, the blanket just kind of moves. The lights turn on and off. Oh, this one has a shadow on the door. Yeah, that's right. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Because it's easy to miss the first time. He does go over the footage the next day, so you see it. That was one where I almost wished that in that sequence, because, yeah, it's like the sheet, and then there's the shadow. And then she wakes up to, she says she felt him breathing. Yeah, Yeah, and I almost wish that when he was reviewing 
the footage, he noticed the sheet, but didn't notice the sheet. So the shadow is like a thing that maybe you, and it's like subconscious or you do catch it, but he doesn't. I think that's kind of creepy. Yeah. Instead of pointing it out. like I don't think he pointed out the light, but like that's a really obvious one. Yeah. Yeah. The shadow is a nice subtle, yeah. subtle thing there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get into a fight and he says the douchiest thing because like she storms away from him and goes upstairs and he's like, yeah, go hang out with your friend upstairs. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> and then that's the, she's so very done at that point. Yeah. Cut to her crying on she the goes, floor. Okay, Mika. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Bye. And then, yeah, literally cut to her sobbing on the ground. <laughs> oh boy. God. Why is she still with Mika, dude? It's so funny. Earlier, they're like sitting there. It's after some shits happened, and she's just like, "I'm, I'm so sick of this, of this life." Yeah, she's (laughs) she's sitting there drinking coffee, and she's like, "I'm sick of this life." (laughs) I was like, "Yeah, with Mika, girl, yeah." (laughs) Mika's paying for her school, I guess. I don't know what else is going on. Yeah, because she's a student. Student, yeah. And he's a day trader. He's a day trader. Coin that. So the next night, night twenty. That's when she's dragged out of the bed and the room. This one's great. Yeah, this is like pot boils over. Yeah. This is, this is it, man. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah, she's dragged out of the room. The door slams. Mika opens in, like, runs back and like, let her go and pulls her back. And she's got a fucking bite mark on her Ooh, back. Yeah, and that bite mark is so gross looking because it's, the teeth are all jagged and you can tell it's a bunch of little teeth that are not all straight and yeah it just ooh, just imagine what this thing's mouth looks like is so gross yeah it's real gross it almost looks like a big like weird fish or something got a hold of her it's <laughs> nasty so they make plans to go to a hotel but uh yeah she just kind of becomes catatonic he finds her clutching a cross yeah. so hard that her hand is bleeding yeah. And that's fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but then <laughs> he burns the cross. That's right. He throws it in the fireplace and then zooms in on it. And what? I don't know why he burned the cross. <laughs> I, I thought he was going to burn the picture, yeah. maybe, because that was something the demon kind of led them to. Or I thought he was going to burn, try and burn the camera. Sure. And then it doesn't burn. So then we see him, like it like fades out and he takes it out of the fire and he's just it's just still working or, or the something Ouija board or even. the we anything but no he burns the cross yeah. that she had been clutching for protection presumably yeah i don't know i don't know why he does it but it's to his detriment because that next night's the that last shot one is also hilarious that cross just burning in that <laughs> fireplace on this like shitty camcorder it yeah. looks like some kid trying to make a music video at home yeah to upload to new grounds so good yeah, uh, but yeah, after he burns that cross, she's like, no, I don't want to go I to a hotel stay. anymore. Yeah, yeah stay with me. I want to stay. I'm fine. It'll be better. And stay. then she says, uh, we'll be all right. And you hear kind of a second Yeah, it's like a weird voice. second voice. And, and think, then she smiles. Yeah, I think that's when she just, she's been fully taken over by. For sure. Yeah. Because next night, last night, night 21, three mm-hmm. weeks in at 1.27 a.m., she wakes up. And uh, she, like, does her thing where she stands and stares at Mika. And then, like, the blankets get pulled off of him by probably some uh, Oren Pelly probably sitting down (laughs) there on the other side of the bed (laughs) on the floor. And then she, uh, yeah, she stands there for another almost two hours Mm -hmm. before walking out and going downstairs and then just starts screaming for him. And he wakes up all scared. Her screams sound weird, too. Crazy. Mika! Yeah. And he, like, jumps out of bed and he's like, ha, ha, and runs out. And, you know, the camera stays there. He doesn't grab the camera. So you just see him run out and go downstairs. And then he starts screaming and she's screaming and then silence. And it's silent for a while. And you're like, what the fuck happened, man? Mm -hmm. And then uh, you hear some footsteps coming upstairs. And then his body flies at the camera and knocks it over. He flies like right. It's like his back just being thrown at the camera. Yeah. And the camera falls over. And then she, we see her walk upstairs. She walks into the room or she's already upstairs. She walks into the room and she kind of like bends over his body and is looking at it. And then she looks up at the camera and then has spooky demon face. Yeah. And that's it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that, that is a refilmed ending yeah i'm trying to um let me see okay so what we watched was the theatrical, theatrical mm-hmm. ending and like 
canonical. Yes, that's, yeah. yeah. The original ending, Katie comes back upstairs with the knife and then sits down next to the bed and fast forward, it's like this fast motion. She sits there for two days in a row, which I think is very creepy. Yeah. I think the idea of the ending of this finally breaking the, like you're always seeing this room at night, I think it finally moves into you're seeing it during the day and she's still, Oh yeah. I think that's really that is creepy. creepy to me. Mm-hmm. The cops show up. And they find Mika's body and they come upstairs and then she like kind of runs at the cops with a knife and they shoot her and that's the end. Yeah. Uh, There is a studio ending, which, yeah, this is... That's the throat slit one? That's the throat slit one where she... It's it's the same thing. You hear him stop screaming. She walks upstairs. She closes the door behind her, walks right up to the camera and like she's smiling and slits her throat. Then there's an unfilmed one she where just beats him to death with the camera. With the camera, yeah. Point of view thing. Yeah. Yep. A lot of I'm I bet there's even more we don't know about. <laughs> I don't love the demon face ending. That in paranormal activity? Yeah. I don't mind it. Which of these would you have preferred? I kind of like the one where she's sitting there for two days. That's good, but then she gets killed by the cops. Yeah, that's a little yeah. underwhelming. I don't know. Or it kind of, I think it'd be creepy if she sat there for two days and then she got up. What are you doing? I can't reach my neck with these floaties on. Oh, okay. My neck itches. <laughs> I feel like a T-Rex. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be creepy if she sat there, rocked back and forth for two days, got up, maybe like walk towards the camera and kind of like, like looked at it and then just turned around and like left. And then it was silent and there's nothing there. And then it ends and they're like, we don't know where Katie is. I think that would be kind of creepy. Yeah. Cause that's simple. I'm but. so curious to see how I feel about the second one. Cause I remember thinking it was underwhelming. I know. I just want to watch it now, but we can't really watch it now. Cause no. we have to record it so much later. We have a schedule <laughs> set. <That's>, yeah. <laughs> I'm ex- yeah, I'm excited to watch these other ones because, and now I'm like, well, if some of these are prequels and they're prequels involving this backstory in this one, how are we filming in those and why are we? I'm just, I'm very curious what the justification is for having stuff filmed in those other ones. Well, we will see yeah. over the next couple of weeks and you will too if you're watching. Watch these fucking movies along with us, man. Mm-hmm. They're super short and simple. Yeah. And I think they're all on Hulu, I oh, believe. Okay. So if you have Hulu, there they are. If not, I don't know, rent them from Amazon. Do something. Watch them. They're fun. They're a lot of fun. So, yeah, next week we will be doing Paranormal Activity 2 with a guest. Mm-hmm. You'll still be a pool party. Pool party. <laughs> Floaty clap. Slapping the floaties <laughs> together. Yeah, thank you for coming to the pool party. Oh, oh. got my get the pool noodle. <laughs> we have squ- we have just an eight pack of squirt guns sitting here. That I we- know. I was thinking, oh, be fun to fill those up, and I realized, like, no, we have so much electrical equipment. Yeah. I don't want to like Final Destination. I thought this maybe podcast. filling one with beer and just uh, occasionally Ooh, shooting into fun. my mouth throughout the episode, but it would taste like plastic. Yeah, it would. All right, thank you guys for listening where can people find us James? dead meat james on twitter and instagram hit that up i think instagram i'm coming in close to 100 whoa really i know i'm but, not but it's like <laughs> fucking instagram i don't even you follow me on twitter yeah you kids you can follow me on instagram and twitter yeah do that too carebeck c-r-e-b-e-c-c on twitter and instagram i think she follows you do more on instagram than i do probably i don't yeah. do a ton I, I think I've done one Instagram story because I don't <laughs> yeah, get the point. We're, we're so bad. I know. I don't like things that disappear. I don't like things that disappear. And also, if I have something that I think is good enough to be in an Instagram story, I'm just going to make it a post. Yeah. Whatever. All Whatever. Right. We're old. Uh, <laughs> email deadmeatpod at gmail.com. And, uh, Dead Meat Store. Yep. If you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. Bye. Until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this is Benjamin Popcorn. Bye. <laughs>